guys, it's me, it's Queen Arset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Okay, guys, so today we have a very interesting question, and I'm hoping that some of you are going to be brave enough to uh, comment on this in the comment section, okay? I'm going to give my point of view, and then you can help this gentleman with your point of view. So... I was talking to an Aquarius male and he asked me, is it normal for a married man or a married woman to masturbate regularly? Now, first and foremost, I want to say that I have seen couples get into big fights about this. Okay. I think that one of the things about masturbation is that most of us start masturbating at a time when it has to be hidden. Most of us are young, middle school, something like that, you know? So it's something that you kind of feel the need to hide in a lot of families, okay? So a lot of us never break out of hiding it. A lot of us never break out of being able, like people treat it like it's a taboo subject even though most people admit that they do it. Now, it's normal to do it, according to psychologists, and it's normal not to do it. The same way it's normal to have sex and it's normal not to have sex. But I've seen a lot of couples get into fights about this because they didn't talk about it. I'll give you an example. I knew one couple, a heterosexual couple, now, according to the wife, she says she was in the bed asleep and she felt something wet, <laughs> is what she said. And she turns over and her husband is pleasing himself. Now, mind you, they had been married for three years. They had dated for a year before getting married and they had been married for three years. So I'm like, how did this conversation never come up? But you wouldn't, <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys would be surprised how many couples I've counseled who have had big things going on for years and never discussed it with each other. They've talked to me, they've talked to other people, but they never discussed this with each other. So the two of them had never had a conversation about this. So she said she woke up, she was pissed. She was pissed. She got out of bed, went downstairs. Um, the next day, he fell asleep, so he didn't notice. The next day they were talking, or he was trying to talk to her, and she had an attitude. So he told me he didn't even know what she was upset about. So after a couple of days of the silent treatment, they finally discussed what the problem was. And he was like, you know, I don't understand what's the problem. And she was like, well, you didn't wake me up. We could have, you know, been intimate. And he was like, so you're saying that I should, you know, never, you know, please myself to wake you up every time, or wait for you to come home, or wait for you to be in the mood. And they had a really big fight about it. And to this day, every time it comes up, he told me they still fight about it because they never really resolved it. He find, he feels as though he can do what he want to do, obviously. So instead of stopping, he just started going in the bathroom. He locks himself in the bathroom when he wants to and does what he got to do and then goes to bed. So she just kind of like let it go, but it's still a sore spot, you know? So he said, every time they get into an argument about the past, that always comes up. So my thing is, is that this is the kind of thing that a couple should discuss, especially if they have strong feelings about it. She should have told him, she told me it was disrespectful of him to do that. And I was like, how is it disrespectful? And she said, because I'm there. It's like saying that I can't fulfill my wifely duties. And I'm like, it's not saying that at all. <laughs> it's not saying that at all. It's saying you're asleep and he's doing what he's doing. It's not like it's affecting your sex life. Now, if it's affecting your sex life, there's a whole different ball of wax. So first and foremost, I'm going to say, yes, it's normal for a person at any stage to masturbate, especially when 
the two people don't have matching sex drives. I've talked to a lot of couples where one wants sex much more than the other one. And so in those cases, a lot of times masturbation is how one of the members of the couple is keeping themselves satisfied in between sexual encounters with their husband or their wife. So it is very normal, but because people have such strong feelings about it, it's something I think you should talk about in the beginning of a relationship. If you have strong feelings about anything, you should be talking about those kinds of things, you know? You should be talking about your values, your goals, your, your sexual appetite. You know, all those kind of things are important in a relationship. And I think had this couple had this discussion in the beginning, they wouldn't have had such a nasty reaction to it. And he said that he was always doing it. That was just the first time that she woke up. He used to always do it while she was asleep. And they had a healthy sex life. And that led me to the point that I was making before. If your sex life is healthy and you're getting enough sex, you know, with each other, then the, your other partner doing that is not a problem. But I'll give you another example. I knew a woman that was married to this man and she said that he would masturbate after they had sex. He would, you know, sit in the mirror or something and, you know, and masturbate. And she took issue with that because it was like, are you saying that I'm not satisfying you? Well, come to find out that was part of the problem, but it wasn't because she wasn't giving him enough sex. It was because he was really gay. And he needed to look at, a, you know, a male body to be able to, you know, really release. So that relationship, of course, fell apart. And this came out in therapy. This came out in their couples therapy. So, I mean, it, it can mean a number of different things. That's why I said it's something that you really should talk about if it's something that really means something to you. And if it's bothering your sex life, there's another uh, couple I know. This is two women. And one of them watches a lot of porn. She had, I think she has an addiction to porn. And she watches a lot of porn. And then, of course, afterwards, she masturbates. Now, sometimes her, uh, her woman is home, her wife is home, and they'll engage together. And sometimes she's not, or she's asleep, or she's busy. But like I said, it's something that she's doing all of the time. And my friend told me that... When they are intimate, she noticed that she's more selfish of a lover since she's been constantly watching porn. And I agree with that because when I used to like porn, I used to like it back in the day. I don't watch it anymore. But when I did, I was more of a selfish lover. And that's not true for everybody, but that's just how it affects some people. So in their case, again, she is masturbating more than she's having sex with her wife. And her wife is like, yo, this is really a problem. So at that point, it is a problem and it is something that needs to be resolved. But if it's not interrupting your sex life, I don't think it's, a, it's an issue. Um, the porn thing is another issue on top of that issue, actually, you know, because it's not the issue that she's masturbating. It's the issue that she's addicted to porn. That's where the issue comes in at. But like I said, her girl, her, her wife was saying that it's affecting their sex life. At that point, you now have an issue that needs to be addressed. But it is normal if it's not affecting your sex life and if you're both satisfied. If you're both satisfied, it's perfectly normal. But remember what I said before. So many couples come to me with issues that they need to discuss with each other. I never will understand how two people can have children together, travel the world together, have all kinds of nasty, kinky sex together, you know, deal with death and all kinds of stuff together, but don't have some of the most basic conversations. I don't understand how you can be so vulnerable with a person, but still not get emotionally naked, still not really get intimate. You've been through all these things with them, but you can't even have a simple conversation about what you do and do not like. But you can tell a total stranger <laughs> the whole scenario. So I think that that's one thing 
that if you want to change something in your relationship that could make it better immediately, one of the things is change your communication. Start to be more open about your thoughts and feelings. And this, this should be more like reciprocal, not just one person being open about their thoughts and feelings, but both people in the couple be more open about your thoughts and feelings. That's the one thing I see in relationships that if it changed, a lot of these couples would not be mad at each other. A lot of these couples would not be headed to divorce court. A lot of these couples would not be fighting if they would have some of these basic conversations in the beginning. All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have something to say about this topic, please put it in the comment section. I'm dying to read it. Likewise, if you want to get a reading, email me because I'll give you an appointment. And all my other contact information will be underneath this video. And come back soon because I got a lot more to say. See you later.